Okay, so this quick video is going to be showing you the Refco Infrared Thermometer. It's a really nice infrared thermometer. I, I like it. I don't use infrared thermometers a lot, and so I want to go over for you some of the applications that you can use this and then some of the features. And maybe you'll learn that even though that you can't use it for everything, you can use it for some pretty cool situations that will help you diagnose air conditioning issues and maybe even some electrical issues. To start with, with this device, it has a trigger that you hold in, and you can set it so that way it works in a either an averaging mode min max mode or in lock mode and in lock mode it just is running constantly so you can see it's picking up the temperature of my hand even though i'm not holding the trigger so it's just constantly running and if i change the off of lock mode and you can see that's that's right here where it says lock if i change it off of lock mode i just hold it down a little bit and then it goes back to hold mode and hold mode is where you actually hold the trigger and then that reads and it will average out as long as i'm holding the trigger so you can see we've got the average and the temperature are the same until I put my hand and then you'll see the temperature will rise and then the average will slowly rise as the time extends the longer I hold that trigger in. As soon as I let go, then it locks in the readings. And so that's typically the way that you're gonna use these. One thing I like here is that it shows you right on the side one of the most misunderstood parts of an infrared thermometer, which is that most of them only have a single dot, but this shows you that the spot to distance ratio increases the further it goes away, or the ratio stays the same, but the size of the area that you're measuring increases the further you get away from the tip. Um, one thing that's nice about this one is that as you shoot, and you move in or out, then the range or the area that it's averaging on or measuring from is going to increase and decrease as you go in and out. So it kind of makes that a little bit easier. You get that visual representation. From a safety standpoint, obviously, don't, don't point it in people's eyes and don't point it in a, at a reflective surface that could bounce back into your eyes because it does give off uh, radiation that can damage your, uh, your vision. On the other side, it shows you here that you can turn the backlight on and off by holding measure and pressing up at the same time or turn the laser on and off. You would turn the laser on and off if you were in an area maybe where you were concerned about it reflecting into somebody's eyes or if you're measuring very close, you can see that the laser and the actual infrared thermometer, they're not directly aligned, so there has to be a little bit of separation for them to measure accurately. If you're gonna be right up on something, then you really just point the infrared thermometer at it. So one very useful thing that you can use an infrared thermometer for that I've found more usefulness for than pretty much anything else, set it on uh, 0.9 emissivity, and then go through and measure different circuit breakers against one another. So it's what we would call a comparative diagnosis instead of using it for an absolute number. And that's something that is actually quite useful. So you can see here, we're generally reading in 72 degrees. And as you go up the breakers, I'm just looking for any significant temperature change because that's gonna tell me, you know, potentially where we may have high load or there may be actually an issue. So right here we can see that we've got an 81, right here you can see we had an 81 degree circuit breaker when the bulk of them, even the main breaker is a lower reading of about 74 to 72 in that range. That's one area that you can use infrared thermometers like this Refco infrared thermometer very effectively is by measuring one electrical device against another. I even use it in the case of comparing condenser fan motor temperatures when I have multiple condensers that have the same motors and they're running in similar conditions to compare those condensing fan motors to one another in order to see if I have one that's running warmer than another under the same conditions. Obviously, this is especially helpful when you don't have a published number. Like, for example, you're not going to have a manufacturer who tells you exactly what this breaker is going to run under normal load conditions or what temperature a condensing fan motor should be. But using it for a comparison is actually a really good use of this device. Again, making sure that you try to get it set into at least close to the proper emissivity. Something else that a lot of technicians get confused is they forget that an infrared thermometer is measuring surface temperature, it's not measuring air temperature. One thing that a lot of technicians get confused about is they use an infrared thermometer and they think that it's measuring air temperature, but it's actually measuring surface temperature. So as you can see, if I put my hand here, the temperature jumps way up, even though the air in between the thermometer and my hand isn't changing. So when technicians shoot things like vents, for example, they're measuring the temperature of the vent averaged out, depending on the you know how far away you are from that vent surface, and you're measuring the surface area, and not the air temperature and in many cases it takes a long time for that surface temperature of the vent to achieve the same temperature as the air coming out of it. So runtime becomes a really big factor. Now let me show you one of the most important parts of using an infrared thermometer and that is 
setting the emissivity properly. So that is this E value here. So in order for me to set it, I would have to hit mode again, and now I can go up and down, and all I do is hit up and down in order to change the emissivity. For average reading of most common surfaces, a 0.9 is going to generally be sort of in the middle. But you have to understand that every different type of surface is going to absorb and reject different amounts of energy from the infrared thermometer. So you have to set it in appropriately for the emissivity of that object if you want to get an accurate reading. As an object becomes more reflective, it's going to be less and less accurate with an infrared thermometer. So measuring things like wall temperatures, maybe breakers within a panel, those things are going to be more accurate than measuring a shiny surface or trying to measure glass or something of that nature. You're going to find that infrared thermometers become more and more inaccurate the more reflective or transparent a surface is. All right, so this is a emissivity table that I found online. There's many of them that you can find. And, you know, they're not going to be 100% accurate because there's a lot of uh, particular considerations in order to choose emissivity, but it gives you an idea. And you can see, you know, aluminum, for example, anodized aluminum, it's 0.77, but if it's polished, it goes all the way down to 0 0.05. And again, my experience is that as something becomes more reflective, it, it really becomes more difficult to use an infrared thermometer. If you look at something like, uh, let's find something else that's practical, masonry, 0.94, Brick is a 0.9, um, good end up, you know, plastics, which would be a common thing that you would measure like on a uh, black plastic on a circuit breaker is a 0.95. And so this is why if you can see sort of an average 0.9 is, is going to be the most common area for most common things that you would be measuring. You know, human skin is a 0.98. As you pay attention, you'll notice that, that the surfaces that are more reflective tend to be lower numbers and the surfaces that are more matte finish, you know, less reflective tend to be higher numbers is, is most common. All right, so that's a quick demonstration of the Refco infrared thermometer. Um, I think it's a good tool to have in the toolbox. It's good to have one, it's good to know how to use it. It's important to not use it in a way that's going to be inaccurate, that's gonna give you a false uh, outcome or a false reading, which is where I see a lot of home inspectors and, and people who maybe don't know what they're doing as much, just pointing it at a vent and expecting that that reading is gonna be uh, absolutely correct without adjusting for emissivity and without taking into account the fact that that reading cone increases the further the distance is away from the infrared thermometer. But once you know how to use it, it's a good tool to have. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.